ね。Countdown is done, and after a 12-year absence, the Buccaneers of East Tennessee State are about to tee it up and kick it off tomorrow night. And here to get us ready for some football are head coach Carl Torbush and Scott Carter. And gentlemen, thank you for carving some time out for us today. I know this is the calm before the storm. Yeah, I mean, I know you're busy. <laughs> the calm is about to be over with, and the storm is about to rise. I told uh, Scott and a lot of people recently that uh, they're getting ready to start keeping score. Uh, obviously, they're going to start keeping W's and L's, but right. what a great and exciting time for ETSU, ETSU football, the Johnson City area, the Tri-Cities area, East Tennessee. Uh, I, I can't tell you how exciting it is right now, and it's really a histor historical moment, right. and uh, this guy right here has had a lot to do with the things that, uh, and the excitement that have gone along with uh, bringing football back to ETSU. And I want to talk to that real quick before we touch on some more football. I want to talk about the pre stuff. Yes, Tell sir. us what's going to be happening today, what's going to be happening tomorrow before game time. Well, we've got all kinds of stuff planned to get everybody riled up today. Uh, we do have a uh, Food City pep rally at their South Road Street location. It's and we'll get, be there. Going to be there. Yeah. Uh, it's going to go around 4 o'clock. Coach is going to be out there around 5, 5, 15. We'll have some of our spirit squad dance team cheerleaders. Uh, we've got a soccer match tonight, 6 o'clock on campus. And then uh, soon after that at 7 o'clock, we're going to be uh, distributing some standing room only tickets. So uh, come early and get in line for that. Our ticket staff will be out there. We've been able to, to work with the, the city and the fire marshal for about 500 additional tickets. Everybody wants a ticket. And we're thankful uh, yeah. for that. Right. We want to do our best to get as many folks That's a good problem as we can. To have. It sure is. Is. We'll yeah. take that every week, no yeah. doubt about it. And then at 8 o'clock, we got a very special bonfire tonight uh, to get everybody pepped up and excited about the game tomorrow. Uh, got a couple of surprises and unveil a new mascot, some very, very special things. And then, uh, and obviously after that, it's game day. And on game day, just real quick, talk us through game day. What time is that buck walk going to take place? Oh, National Anthem kickoff. Give us all that pregame sure. information. Sure, kind of walk it back, I guess, from, from kickoff. Right. 7.30. Uh, be there. Uh, it's going to be historic, as Coach said, very, very special, and be a lot of, of, of non-dry eyes, I think they'll say. I'll be one of them. Right. Uh, buck walk will be at 555. Okay. Uh, obviously, being a school day, there's a school dismissal that's going to take place, so the actual parking lots won't open until around 330, uh, but our food city zone uh, will be open at about 430 there for everybody, which be there will be right well. adjacent yeah. to the buck walk. Yeah. And uh, we just want people to come and have a good time. You know, we, we've got a lot planned, but this is a time for families and alumni and friends and students to enjoy their own experience and, and make new traditions. I know some of the greatest traditions in my family were, were built around football. We hope people will seize that moment. All right, Coach, let's get to football. I know you want these young men to be hyped, but you do, like I've heard you say over the past few days, you don't want to play the whole game in the first 10 minutes. No, we really don't want them to play the game before the game. I yeah. told them at the pep rally tonight it's important to enjoy it, have fun with it. Uh, but don't use all of our energy up tonight. Right. Uh, make sure we don't use it up right before the game tomorrow because it is going to be a, just an unbelievable, enthusiastic, enthusiastic, exciting atmosphere. Uh, I want our players to enjoy it, but right. I want them to be mature enough to handle it and understand that we've got to play four quarters of football. And uh, what I want them to be able to do is go out and perform. Uh, they need to look well coached. They need to have consistency. They need to have continuity, do things right. Uh, team, obviously, in the first game that – yeah, if there's a lot of equality in the uh, talent level, the one that makes the fewest mistakes, fewest turnovers, uh, probably going to win the football game. Do you feel like you and Kennesaw State are, are pretty on an equal plane there as far as the talent level is concerned? Well, I, you know, I don't really know that. Uh, they've, they've got more transfers and they're too deep than we do. Uh, I told somebody yesterday that uh, out of the 22 starting positions on offense and defense, 18 of our players are freshmen or redshirt right. freshmen. Right. Uh, so we've got four guys, two of them being cornerbacks that are junior college kids, and they are great kids, and two other kids that uh, transferred in. Uh, I think Kennesaw probably has about 14 uh, on their two deep roster, so they've got a little bit more uh, upperclassmen than we do. But I, I've told everybody this will be a great evaluator where we are as a football program, where we need to go, how we did it, uh, did we do it the right way. Uh, I think we have. Uh, what we want to do is make sure that we put a, pro a productive and a competitive product on the field right now, but what we're concerned about is where we are two to three years from now. And looking at your depth chart, that depth chart is pretty fluid, isn't it? You're going to be looking at every one of those young men and saying this, this is your tryout. Oh, it really is. I mean, uh, we've talked about I talked to Scott coming over here. We're going to dress out about 65 players, and I expect 65 players to play. 
uh, the ones that aren't going to play aren't going to dress out. We don't want to take a chance of putting them in there because we'd like to redshirt the rest of the right. guys that are on our football team. So, and we've told our guys that. And that's not to say that we won't pull a guy out of red shirt after game two or three. But right. if he's made it through five or six games and not played, he won't play this year. Now you've, you've had some injuries, but you've had you've you've done pretty well as far as the injury. Well, we, we've got some injuries that uh, preferably we'd rather not have. Right. But that's the game of football. Right. I mean, when you play. Uh, competitive in a contact sport uh, you're going to have injuries a few more than we'd like to have had to, to some key guys but uh, you know I think the other guys have stepped up and um, you know the great thing about the guys that are injured if they're not able to play this year they'll get a red shirt or a hardship year so they'll be able to play for four more years. Last question for you coach tomorrow night when that ball is finally kicked off what do you think your emotions are going to be what are you going to be feeling what are you going to be thinking I know you're going to be thinking football but it's also got to hit you that you're restarting this program. Well I, I mean I'll be I think I'll be composed uh, I, I know how to be stoic on the sidelines, but at the same time, I know what's going to be going on inside my heart, inside my mind to, to see football back for guys like him who played football at ETSU, to uh, see all the lettermen be part of it, to see all the fans that had it taken away that it's back, uh, to see our student body get so involved, to see a band of 160 plus members that will end up being 250 members at some time. Uh, to see the involvement of women's athletics, just the whole atmosphere. I mean, there's a lot of things that's going to go through, and you got to realize now, two years ago, we had me as the head coach, and that was it. And, I was, and then uh, two I years later, we've got, <laughs> we've got 120 football players. We've got a full staff. We've got a full staff of managers and trainers. Uh, obviously, we're able to hear the band every day, which is exciting. Uh, I get pumped up just there listening to them play while we're practicing. So uh, there, there's just so much that's happened in a two-year whirlwind of time. Yeah. Uh, we've got a brand-new weight room. We've got a nice dressing room. Obviously, we've got one of the best indoor workout facilities in the country, and we use that quite a bit, quite right. often. So there, there are a lot of great, great things going on right now. What we need to do is, uh, like I say, I told our players, I, I'm not a crystal ball guy. Right. Uh, I don't know if we win or lose. If we play like we're capable of playing right. and we recruited the right guys and we coached the right guys the right way, then we'll be in that ball game in the fourth quarter. And that, if we're able to do that, then we'll have our chance to win. Coach, I want to shake your hand. Wish you good luck, my friend. I will be there on the sideline tomorrow night. May not be a tear in my eye, but there'll be a big smile on my face. I'll tell you what, Scott, Thank you. appreciate you, buddy. Hey, we got the pep rally coming up. It's today from 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. It's Food City on South Run. We would love for you to stop by, take advantage of that. Coach Torbush will be there. And then later on, we got other stuff going on as well. It's tomorrow, Food City Fan Zone from 4.30 to 7 p.m. right before kickoff. Kickoff is at 7.30. They got the buck walk going on. Everything is blue and gold. It is a blue and gold everywhere out there tomorrow night, and we would love for you to join us tomorrow night. If you got a ticket, be there.